I am Exi. And I am Lini. Together, Together we, we bring you African Tea Pot Podcast. Journey with us through Africa's vast variety of culture and heritage to discuss how this affects families both home and abroad. Make sure to subscribe, like, and share this podcast. Welcome to another episode of the African Tea Pod. Hope you're having a good week. Hope you're inspired. And of course, there's Edna, in case y'all were wondering if she's still alive. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And we're so excited, guys, to introduce our new, what can I say, permanent co-host. Excuse me, I'm not new. <laughs> she's not new, actually. Thank Even you. On, um, what, four or so episodes for season one? I'm on yes. every episode. True. You're on every episode in the background, but you're like four episodes, you know, No, I'm on, sharing your opinion. No, I'm on every episode. Well, guys, yeah. Thank you for joining us for episode <laughs> three. <laughs> like she said, like Lini said, hope you had an amazing week and everything turned out fine. Thank you guys for your contributions on Instagram, right? And Facebook. On the community corner. Oh, yeah. That, that was a juicy one. And um, she very much appreciates your feedback and she's listening to this episode. You know, we kept her anonymous because, you know, it is. In but... case anyone's wondering the she we're referring to or what we're referring to, that just means you don't follow us on Instagram. Please but... go follow us on Instagram. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you what it's about. So we had this um, fellow person who listens to the podcast and like, reached out and so we decided to use her story we didn't add a name or anything to it but she's cameroonian and it pretty much says i have two sisters who are two shades lighter than me i have always been compared to them and made to feel less beautiful especially by family at school i was seen as the ugly sister recently my auntie bought some cream and told me it will help tone my skin Mm -hmm. she keeps calling to ask how well it works i started using it but stopped due to the shame of what people will say what should i tell her yes so that was the inspiration for today's topic and today's topic by the way lini what's the title of our today's topic today's topic is the light and dark yes which in other words means skin bleaching so if you heard that um, little dilemma from our listener, then you understand how she inspired today's topic. And so we'll just go ahead and jump right in. Pretty much. Okay. So Lini, when you hear about skin bleaching, right? Or when we hear about skin bleaching, what comes to our mind? When you, or your I mean, mind. Your it's mind. pretty much what it is. Bleach mm -hmm. makes things white. Sorry, True. whiter true so pretty Facts. much when you hear of bleach it's just people trying to be lighter and when um i was reading the comment and i emphasized tone is because people attribute this negative energy with bleaching which i mean there's a reason why right and so people right. say i'm toning my skin i'm revealing my true shade yes this is who i am i mean facts mm-hmm Okay. <laughs> Anywho, um, pretty much when you want to look at the whole idea of skin bleaching, then it gets you thinking, where did it come from? Like, when did it become a thing of where people are attributed to their shade or when shade became a thing that we have to work out to be accepted? Like, but um, it's true. I completely agree with what you said. I think when people think of or talk about um, black, uh, it's either they're thinking of us as one shade of really black or they're thinking of us as different shades of black. And I think in the way or out of the African perspective, when we talk of black, people just think of us like one shade. But when we go within our African communities, then colorism comes in right where now oh you're black but what kind of black are you as if it matters as if that should be something worth differentiating oh you're black but are you lighter black are you there are different words they use are you mulatto when we talk about history right they say are you mulatto black are you 
white black are you mukala black right there are different names people use but suddenly within our african communities then colorism comes in favoritism comes in and i think this goes way back to transatlantic slave trade that's what i would say that's when when we had the mix between white and black and had babies out of that mixture and then the lighter or the closer you are to white the more acceptable you are pretty much it's and like most of the things i say i found this um article and i called the skin deep by vicky colbert they were, they were oh, a lot of things were said in there like makes a lot of sense and one of one of the things i was said is it's almost like the darker skin shade is like inferior your social class is like it's not up there. Whereas someone's lighter, they're seen as softer. They're seen as tender. They're seen like, oh, you've got money to maintain a lighter shade. Ajebo. Ajebo is one term too. Ca Cameroonians, mm -hmm. Ajebo, we all understand what we're saying. It's, yeah. it's almost like you're pure, like, and let's not lie. It's sad, but it's almost like you are marriage material when you're lighter. Mm -hmm. It's almost like you being lighter. It's like, it's a trophy wife, a trophy girlfriend. You're more desirable. Pretty much, it's like you're mm -hmm. more desirable, and this is not just a women's thing. No. Mm -hmm. Um, same thing as guys. You would hear girls say, "Ha, ah, see, it's 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 that light skin boy." I know that <laughs> that, that 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 light skin boy, that light skin man. It's just almost like you are associating this guy, his money worth, his family everything is just like we'll have kids they'll be they'll look like this now you're already taking your beliefs and how warped up the society has made the beauty standards and you're applying it to a kid and that's it society's oh, yeah. beauty standards society sets beauty standards and like how you need to look to be beautiful and that's not beautiful it's not right it that in actual sense that's not what beauty is if you look at the meaning of beauty that's actually not what it is but I just think it, that's if someone is wondering where this all this lightning thing became a trend, I think it came from the time when there was that mix between black and white in Africa. And those, so the whiter you are, the more acceptable you are. So pretty much bleaching is suppressing the production of melanin or how melanin expresses itself on your skin. So you're trying to take it out. That's what bleaching is. So now you have to use different harsh chemicals. They could be peels or injections creams and right? don't most of these things have like mercury we a lot of mind them. you we used to use in like the old times and you're like hey mercury is bad for you we moved away from it and people how are we back to using the same thing mercury is from? terrible for your skin i'm like how many did like how it's like we move away from something because it's terrible and a couple of years later we're like right back at it like how can we uneducate ourselves I'm True. like beauty standards. Society will always said that there was a time when this, when the figure eight girl was a thing. Then the figure one girl became a thing. Now the figure eight girl is a thing. Now, over the course of twenty years, are you gonna make your make yourself a figure eight, exactly. a figure one, a figure eight, a figure one? I'm exactly. Just, I'm like it's different. Once you begin to accept the way you look and like and accept like this is you and nothing will change it. It doesn't matter if the figure eight girl is the thing in trend. You're just a figure one true and that takes us to the next question or the next idea which is beauty standards and culture right within the african setting i believe that or how i see it is when did it become a situation where looking beautiful became a cultural thing you would think culture is all inclusive because if i am african if i'm cameroonian if I'm Nigerian, if I'm Congolese, I am Congolese. You understand? You don't have to say you are more, you are the most intelligent Congolese because you look like this. Or you are the most um, desirable Congolese, male or female, because you look a certain way. But now we are realizing that culture, it got fused with culture. Where if um, I am making a music video, that is, that's the typical one. I'm making a music video and I have to have lighter skin toned girls and boys on my video so that it is marketable, so that it is desirable. And then that video is expected to 
be a cultural piece. When I'm acting a movie, the lighter skinned girls, the lighter skinned boys get the lead roles and they are more desirable in the movies. They get the job interviews, the jobs, you oh, see yeah. everything. And then this movie is an expression of Africanism. This movie is an expression of how we behave and or what we believe in within Africa. So it's to the point where it's, we started expressing colorism, lighter skin tones within our culture. You see, when someone goes somewhere, it can be a chief, an igwe, a fawn goes somewhere, or his cabinet has to look pretty. So they are all lighter skinned or things like that. Or when I walk into an office, I'll speak just to the pretty girl and the pretty girl has to be the lighter skin tone. I'm going to speak just to the pretty boy. The pretty boy has to be a lighter skin tone. Even your kids, the kids I have, the prettiest one, like in the case of this girl who shared her story with us, the lighter skin sisters were seen as prettier than her to the point where her aunt had to come and give her creams like and tell how, her to tone herself. Like, what kind of impression are you even making? And whenever you were talking about how it affects um, entertainment, celebrity, and, and culture, everything, yeah. if you haven't watched this, this documentary on like Netflix is called Skin by like um, Vivali Nair. Mm-hmm. Pretty gorgeous woman, but she said when she was younger, she was dark and she had issues and she was bullied for it. You look at her now and you're like, how dare you not be confident in yourself? But because she is, but Rina is gorgeous. But and to think she almost bleached. And I'm sorry, kids. It's terrible. I mean, let's 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 not lie about it. It's like when we're six, when we're eight. Mm-hmm. It's it's almost like our compassion. Or it's almost like it's turned off and like. And I'm not just <laughs> saying it for some people. It's like, trust me, all kids. Some of the yeah. things I think about now, I used to say, I'm like, I've broken a human being, and you're just like, how. But, but I don't know. You know, it's growth. That's why it's a growth process. There are certain things that you do that you regret when you do it, that now you regret like, oh, I did this, or I didn't know better. But that's why we're having the conversation so that we can stop those negative words that you attach to people, right? And that brings us to the next point, which is who is affected? Or when they talk about skin bleaching, who does skin bleaching? Or who do we think should do skin bleaching? I mean, in our African communities, I don't think anyone should do skin bleaching, but I think people have the misconception that women are the only people affected by skin bleaching. Skin bleaching is done by everybody, yes. but no one should do skin bleaching. But still, I do, we're not refusing the fact that most of the people pressured into skin bleaching or that do skin bleaching are women. Like whenever you want to go to the WHO, they say 40% of African women use skin bleaching products. And guess what? The highest rating of those people, like 77% of them from Nigeria, 59% of them from Togo, 27 from Senegal, and 25 from Mali. I am not even but surprised. But I want to tell you that skin bleaching is not just in these places I talked about. They may rank higher, but pretty much all Everywhere. over Africa we do it. United States, we bleach. So I'm like, this list is just a list. Yeah, from the same statistics, it was said that one out of every three women, right, in South Africa Bleach. are bleaching. They are bleaching. And South Africa had uh, banned and abolished, I think, the use of mercury and stuff. But that doesn't mean that people are as still, you know, people are like, they but, stop doing but it. Did you know that it's a recent thing now, like Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, and Rwanda have actually started like banning I, I like, realized that Ivorians like, are also doing it. Yeah. I was like, Wow, that's it. But the men, guys, the like, men guys. Do you yeah. know how hard it is to? From Congo. Do you know how hard it is to like ban a product? We will find ways to smuggle it. We would find if we want it, we're going to get it. I, I agree with you in terms of you can, you stopping it is really difficult, especially when it's so rooted. You understand when the birth of of lightning creams. We've as we've discussed, it's way deep right down to identity right down to somebody being comfortable in their skin right down to somebody being acceptable within that culture the moment there is exclusion then it's difficult to ban something you can't ban something when at the same time you are saying i will only consider lighter skin people the smarter ones the richer ones you understand the more exposed ones the more prettier ones it's it's difficult to ban this you know to completely stop the use of creams They'll keep smuggling it. They'll keep smuggling so it. So would you say like, 
like it's what you say like you're encouraging it by the same time you're banning it so would you say like it's a problem or would you say it's like a solution to a problem good one um <laughs> because one. um we are like oh let's not do it let's not do this but let's just say something when you look at the powerful people in in society it doesn't apply for everybody but most of the powerful people in society in society that's especially the africans especially the black people you see lighter shade women you and see, men you see women mm-hmm. who even mm-hmm. make your mind roll you're like are they black yes they're black but mm-hmm. guess what your lighter skin and like you said men even i myself i follow i i say one thing but i'm like i keep saying women but true it's men too so yeah we are all victims of it because when you remember when we said this and we had a few guys who came and did took the poll and the questions that we put on instagram i realized that the guys came and picked the answer of men too because we asked the question but all right? women are like just but all men. women were like okay women only are the ones who do skin bleaching but the guys came and said oh no this affects us too and they were clicking on the answers and Lini and i we talked about the answer and we we're laughing about it laughing in terms of not like making a mockery of it but just how ignorant we are as you understand as a generation as a community we are ignorant of the effects these things have especially uh, standards of beauty it it affects both men and women, both ways. A man feels the pressure. A guy wants to be de- desirable by women. And a woman also wants to, de- to be desirable by men. So if you've said the darker you are, the worse it is, then everyone wants to become lighter. And I think when you look at society, society sees, most of society see bleaching creams as a solution. Solutions. You are so dark, so tone up. Mm-hmm. You understand? So the moment you are... The only place where you are hearing that this is bad is coming from the health perspective, like WHO, as you said. Yeah, but but social life is like, yeah, it's yeah, it's a solution. And then you have the health point of view that's like, no, to to skin bleaching. So I'm like, I can see why to some people it's a solution to a problem. All we're trying to say is let's get to the part where it's what. You ex- you accept once you keep bleaching, you can't stop bleaching. So what I'm trying to say is, if you keep bleaching, you uh, for the rest of your life down to your kids, it's in your genes. Your skin isn't your kid isn't gonna grow up and pick up the shade of the bleach <laughs> tone. No, she's picking up your genes now. You start bleaching that kid, facts, and I'm really like, facts. So what you're trying to say is, it's a forever problem. You're never enough. You need to wake up every day and bleach. You're never enough. Kids sees mommy bleach. She's not enough. She wasn't born enough. Jeans are jeans. If we figure out a way to... Did you... That means your kids are going to bleach too. This, That's what we're saying. This isn't a part that I added because I couldn't get enough sources, but you're starting to do injections and things that are supposed to change the fetus shape. Guys, <laughs> listen. That's terrible. Yo, if I'm your baby and I get out and I'm deformed in some form, shape, anything, and you tell me you wanted me to be a shit, like, even if I'm not... Def- like... Okay, I'm trying to, like, who even made this? Why? The risk, though. Why? The risk people take is alarming. You remember the video I showed you, Lini, of this lady literally in a bath? I don't know if that was a bath of acid. I don't know what the, that bath was made out of. I don't know if that was a bath of, I don't, I don't know, mercury-infused waters. I don't know what it is. And literally, they were using, like, a spatula to, like, scrape off the darkness off of this lady. And they were like 30% off. I think this was from Nigeria. Oh, you're going to get this 30% off. It is instant. It's this. It's, Guys. This is terrible. First, first of all, anything that says instant is a problem. <laughs> anything that says instant. If it's not surgery. Like, that's even why you have a difference. You want to build. Um, you. This is a topic for another time, but you want to build your body and there's an instant solution. It's a BBL. It's something surgery. Someone tells you instant and you're supposed to take a cup and chuck it. What is in that the cup? cup? What is it taking away? Like instant red flags. Once you hear instant, it should be like, because even think about it, you have a, you have a disease. You've got something. It takes a while to fix it. You just don't get up and you're like, what shot of insulin? Diabetes gone. Exactly. Like, what? Exactly. And I remember this. This is like just something that popped in my head. But 
I had heard this comedian say, why is it that from a family of seven kids, there are three boys and the rest are girls, all the girls are light skinned and the boys are dark skinned. This doesn't mean that you don't have some guys that bleach, but this is to tell you that majority are women. Oh, and majority are women, but we saw some clips of guys who have ended up bleaching their bodies, end up bleaching their bodies because of, you know, societal pressures and standards of beauty. I want to be handsome enough and stuff like that. And even if you are the woman, a guy is dating you. We've had situations where a guy is dating a girl and he starts making comments of her dark skin tone. Like, is it Toke Makinawa? This um, a radio personality from, hopefully, I, I, don't, I don't know if I'm saying the name right, from Nigeria. She was in a relationship and when she got out of it, she wrote a book. And she said, and she put her pictures before and after and said she toned her skin and bleached slash bleached her skin because of the guy. And he still left her. Why? Okay. Why did you date me when I was darker then? Why didn't you and just And kept go comparing her. With, just find you know, a lighter girlfriend. With light, lighter skin celebrities. And this is to tell you that this thing goes across the board. The old, the young, the rich, the poor. And the statistics also show that globally, right now we have 20 billion in this industry of bleaching creams and people bleaching themselves. And they said by 2024, it's going to go up to a whooping sum of 31 million. I mean, sorry, billion. That's, that's just 20 billion of people lacking confidence. No, that's in the money. But... But... No, but, yeah. that, but I'm just saying, when mm -hmm. you convert that money to what it means to us, that's just 20 billion worth of people out there who think they're not enough. And then let's look at it from the financial aspect. I didn't think about this earlier, it just came, but if we think we keep saying we are in poverty, uh, we need money for problems, right? Or we need the government, we blame, you know, we have so many issues, we blame A, B, C, D. If you can afford, think about this, 31 billion by 2024, and then 77% of this is coming from Nigeria. That's to tell you the money we are using on bleaching creams, which we could be investing in something else. Some of us will go hungry and be light skinned. Just saying. you understand, like, and it's and I, again, it's a cycle. You understand, mother thinks daughter has to be lighter, just as she did bleaching to get daddy. You understand, daddy is saying nothing, maybe, or daddy supports the idea, right? I have a daughter who is not pretty enough. She needs to do something about it, and we have men who finance this. Some fathers give the money to the mothers knowing they are buying bleaching creams for these kids. So we cannot just say, oh, it's women. We blame women. No, all of us are in this. You understand? When there is discrimination and bias, men, right, keep bashing the darker skin girls and calling them ugly and taking the lighter, you know, dating the lighter skin girls. So you are part of the problem. We are all part of the problem. We, the women, accept it. We let these men dictate to us how our skin should look. You understand? So we are all out here like, oh, we are independent. We don't want nobody telling us what to do. But at the end of the day, if they say we are ugly because we're dark, we then bleach. We, we bleach. You oh, get what I'm saying? Please don't say bleach. We tone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Facts, Lini. Facts. And then let's not even get into the conversa uh, conversation of psychology. Like, the adverse effects this has on mental, like the mental thinking of somebody. Because you were told you were ugly from the age of six. By the time you get to 14, 13, you can't wait to get your hands on these bleaching creams. You can't wait to mix, I don't know, mercury with God knows what kind of bombs we mix in our homes. And we put it in our bodies. And, we, and most of these kids that do this, or teenagers, don't know the health risk that this entails just to name a few the skin thinning first of all due to the high steroids you know and mercury boils skin scarring lini um then now there is like because it goes straight to your bloodstreams we have skin cancers yeah. you know liver cancers and leukemia all of this come from these creams we don't think about it and then we would blame village people I know. Village people are the yeah, cause of all Yeah, the problems. cause of... We said the village people did it. You know, but... Anyways, I just think, like, from the psychological standpoint, it is 
a social neglect because socially we don't have, hold people accountable for their words. We don't know the power that words have on people, but we want to regulate the physical stuff. What we say, Africans, please, what we say matters. When you tell someone they are ugly, you can't go and regulate the creams they use to wash off ugliness. It's taken years to put someone in that mental spot. It's almost like we need to purge. It's almost like we need. It's almost like people oh, need yeah. to out. It's, it's almost like I don't know how we can like pull it out because it's almost like we need to start from a generation where it starts to understand that this doesn't matter. That, yeah, and then like I said, if someone gets an injection to make their kid lighter that you're crossing on to the next generation okay mommy bleach you we need i mean i don't even i don't even know what to say because whenever i was like you can bleach the fetus i'm like what and even you know when you're pregnant you go doctors actually refuse they discontinue you from lightening creams and stuff because these things guys goes into your bloodstreams so they actually refuse you from using them they tell you you need to trash it till your preg- till you you give birth, till you give birth, and then women. This aspect that women have been told or we've been made to believe, mothers who've been made to believe that we can change the ugliness of a person, is 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 another problem, and I don't know why we use the word ugly in the first place. But we've been told you can change ugliness, you can't change how physically you are, because if you can. The lighter women, lighter skin women will not be complaining about marital issues or will not be complaining about relationship issues, will not be complaining about losing jobs, will not be complaining about being bullied. When someone is talking, you have very pretty light skin girls talking of bullying. Oh, and um, so, before people come for Edna's head, when she says some things you cannot physically change, we understand some things are phys- physically changeable, which I said another mm-hmm. um, conversation and things that physically can happen. This one is far beyond physical. This one is rooted in you. You are born with melanin. You are born with a certain amount of melanin you're supposed to produce. It's the same thing. When babies are born and one is four pounds and one is eight pounds, okay, what? You're going to tell the eight pound baby, hey, baby, get up, lose weight. <laughs> like, that's how that kid now, 16 years down the line, you want the baby you born at eight pounds to look like your four pound baby. And we're like, they were just. So that was, that was just the only thing I wanted. Mm. to say before oh, people and, aim. So and things are physically changeable. Yeah, and that. something you also said at the beginning, like light people should not do like no. If you want to lighten your skin Who and you are properly involved, like you are properly like you know what the risks are, you understand it, you make an educated decision to come to lighten their skin, then it's their business. They should go ahead to do it because it's the same thing we'll talk about surgeries for beauty purposes, right? Yeah. If you knowingly you know what the effects are you know what you want you are coming from a place of age it's not like you are coming from a place where you hate yourself before you do it right you just want to enhance yourself you know what you're doing then i mean go ahead and lighten your skin so on that note i would say the government can only you see control certain aspects of it it can't just come and say they're going to take it away you see they can control the uh, or ban certain substances that are very bad for your skin, right? But they cannot completely ban that idea of people wanting to lighten their and skin. It's like Botox. Exactly. And even hair. Yes, Black like women hair. and hair. Wigs, yeah. weaves. Exactly. Braids. <laughs> exactly. Just because you are natural doesn't mean the other person with a weave is less of a black woman than you are, right? Mm. So it's the same thing. And it's the same thing like when we are also talking about culture how culture there was a time that culture because if you realize now there is a shift when before when you were looking at music videos and movies light skin was this was the thing you know now you are seeing more darker toned girls and boys in movies but for me i would say not quite dark enough i would still say there's a certain darkness for dark skin people that we still don't see enough representation on on tv or cultural pieces mm-hmm. It's like a it's like a certain size of people. You don't, still don't see it exactly. So, I pretty much think if someone chooses to do something from a place, you need to heal and be okay with yourself, and then you choose to do something because you want to do it for cosmetic reasons, right? Yeah, and 
when when you talk i was scrolling through instagram as well and it seems like you like you just have to be okay with yourself and unfortunately no one can take your mind there unless you start leading your mind to the place it needs to be mm-hmm. we want to pull out of instagram don't shy away from letting your voice be heard join the social media community and tell us what you think shout out to my girl weenie fashionista girl as always she says tell miss lady to stand her ground and set boundaries growing up i was bullied for my darker skin tone and to the point of almost hating myself and not feeling worthy but as i grew up i cherished my darker skin tone as i came to realize folks are paying money you know tanning to have a darker skin tone so she needs to embrace her beauty and tell her auntie to bleep bleep she can also talk to someone she confides in because this is how ptsd starts depression and worst case suicide if she keeps being pressured to bleach her skin exactly it's like with the rise of instagram with the rise of facebook you see our generation suffering from a lot of mental things that have to do with your physical image what you see you can never attain there's filters there's p- people do a lot of things and that's when beauty standards are attributed to money people have money to afford this bbl to afford these botox and things that you don't necessarily have but our great grandparents they did okay they were married they were, had kids they were loved and they never had any of that yeah I agree with you and there's something I want to add to what you're saying. There is a serious condition, guys. It's not like there's a serious condition of what you see when you see yourself. It's a mental it it's a it, this is something that is diagnosed. When the image of yourself is distorted and dysfunctional like, like when you put the mirror and tell somebody to look at themselves and tell you what they see and someone who they paint, the image they paint of themselves is totally different from what you're seeing. You're seeing this really pretty, you understand, gorgeous, beautiful black celebrity or something, and she's telling you about this distorted image she has of herself. That is a complete mental space that needs work on. And from if it's not checked or properly treated, you know, you deal with it, and other stresses, triggers of society comes in, then it leads to things down the line like suicide, you know, eating disorders and things like that. So body image, or when we have these hashtags of body positivity, it's not just a hashtag. It's not just a trend. A lot of us, especially coming from African backgrounds, we don't have access to, you understand, to mental, like I want to say mental boost when it comes to confidence. You are a woman, you're beautiful. You are a guy, you're, you understand, you're good looking, you're handsome. We don't handsome. have that. It doesn't matter if you're a short guy. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're a bit plumpy than somebody else. It doesn't matter if you're thinner than somebody else because it's a thing. You know, I'm in a conversation of beauty standards. It's totally different. We are trying to really hammer on the skin lightening aspect of it, but it falls under the beauty industry and a trend most often, you understand, people try to use trends to define what positivity is, uh, positive body image is. So you're using the trend of a lighter person to see if you are enough or if you're adequate enough, you see, which is completely warped and completely wrong. And aunties and uncles, please, this thing of you war, eh, eh, chai, if, if you just don't the way you go fine, you know, like little no. comments you make, right, Lini? Yeah. You think it's, it's not, but when someone listens up to that from a young or tender age of nine, their teenagehood, when that is when, you know, confidence and people are growing into who they are. When you say those kinds of things and then it, we, this, we have these issues when we are adults. And then now when you meet a boyfriend, a girlfriend, you want them to come and you understand, you want to see yourself liked through the eyes of somebody else. When sometimes they no themselves one is it's, ever going to like, I don't know how to tell people when you see a guy or a girl walk into the room and they feel like they're a hundred percent, you can, you, you can tell like, of course confidence you can smell it you can see it and then you have a girl who walks in the reason why you blend into the background is not because you're not standing on a table and so you don't have a good attitude for it it's just because you want to blend into the background because you feel like there's nothing that you should stand out for and once you blend into a background how do you take yourself out of a background 
True. Like you become part of the wallpaper. And I I need to keep bringing myself back to what, to what I was doing. <laughs> the aunties and uncles, we are not saying they're terrible, they're bad because um Linda Trouble on Instagram also brought out a point that says this this auntie is operating from a place of concern and love. It's True. not because she hates her. And then she says, but the, f- but the fear being projected through this act is much more destructive than helpful. True. And this auntie is probably thinking, hey, how is this my daughter going to get married? How is she going to be happy? And then she ends up doing this because she thinks she's helping. And that's because of what she was brought up to believe. So that's what I meant by it's a cycle. Yes. Coming, and it's a cycle coming from a patriarchy standpoint. You, you need to be lighter or you need to be beautiful enough that a man is going to accept you. You see that? So it's distorted. And we are not forgetting our gentlemen, right? Because you would have a guy who would say, oh, my friend gets all the girls, right? And I'm like, no, you looking good has nothing to do with how many girls are attracted to a specific person. You will attract... Th- okay, if your friend attracts 100 girls, your friend doesn't need 100 girls. You he, need one girl. So guess what? You attract 20. Your one girl is going to be in there. Your friend attracts 100. His one girl is going to be in there. So you don't have to be a light-skinned, quote, you know what I mean? Light-skinned boy. Or, oh, he, you know, he's Ram Sunua. You know, you know what I mean? That fine light boy. Yeah. I mean, when we say these things, it, it can end like for jokes. But in like all seriousness... Because your, gu- your guy friend gets more traffic than you does not determine how good looking you are in the eyes of a woman. Because like Lini said, you need just one to be happy. You need just one to be fulfilled. And the same thing applies to women. You, you don't have to be light skinned because somebody else is going to accept you. It takes just that one guy who doesn't have an issue with your body or with your skin tone for you to be happy. So it doesn't matter. Why, why does it matter to you? somebody you wouldn't date why does it matter that that person should see that you're beautiful like lini said you need yourself to stand out in the room you are you you are brown sugar skin whatever honey color you are you and you own your space that that's just what it is and i, I was like uh winnie fashionista girl and linda table's um comments those were really good ones good highlights and so now that we're kind of like reaching to the end of our paper, I want to bring out the comments who are empowering our girls, empowering our women, and empowering people everywhere. Auspicious already said, tell her, you, t- tell her that you love the type of your skin and you're beautiful in your own right, because that's true. Who said that? Auspicious Ori. Oh, okay. And then Honor the Rich said... <laughs> the thing is I'm reading part of the comment okay she said the thing is simple you were made in the image and the likeness of the most high and sister never you ever forget this you are as gorgeous as you feel pretty as you choose to be beautiful as you choose to show it's your story not theirs it's your flawless not theirs don't let them tell you you ain't pretty cause and in big fat caps lock, you are absolutely gorgeous. Amen. Thank you for the preaching. Guys. I know. I was like, girl, you Do not let too. society dictate to you what your skin tone represents because it's not about your skin tone. It takes more than one aspect of your skin, of your mental intelligence, of how healthy your mental state is for you to be specifically you and what you do. It's kind of like you can't tell someone because they don't have hands, then they can't be productive, right? They're productive with one hand or no hand. So you, you can't let one thing define your purpose, pretty much. Do not let society dictate that the light guy or a light girl has it easy or not. So our light skin or light-toned Africans, we are not also saying, you see, it's, it's not like a bash to you. We are just saying... You should do what you are capable of doing, regardless. Yeah, understand? and this and this shouldn't come out like we're telling we, cause it's like when you try to empower one person, it's almost like you're bashing the other people. Mm-hmm. All I'm trying to say, is whatever shade, when you got out of that room or when you were made, you were, is what you were meant to be, and it's how you are. Like same thing. There's no profession in society that's useless. If it was useless, you wouldn't need it. Exactly, it wouldn't exist in the first place. 
so it doesn't matter if you're white moon white or you are black whatever oh, black, honey caramel <laughs> do, doesn't matter you were made that way because that's just what suits you yeah and it's a constant struggle because because there is also this perception like oh if i mentally get here then everything will be fine no it's a constant it's something that you need to constantly surround yourself with positive affirmations okay you don't just think like oh i'm gonna go and treat this thing and it's just gonna go away is constant treating because the society constantly bashes. So you need to constantly remind yourself that everything is fine and you are enough. That's why on Instagram, Lini, every day we have something to remind ourselves to be thankful and grateful. So please follow us on Instagram and Facebook. And Facebook, comment, share, because we like you being involved, telling us if there's something you really want us to talk about. Let us know. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Do not. So you have Stand any out. suggestions. Exactly. Stand out. Like Lini said in one of her write-ups, why create? Uh, you said to create something, but you create thunderstorm. Do you remember? Why are you creating lightning when you can create a thunderstorm? Why wait for the light when you can create a thunderstorm? Exactly. Because we are storming. Yeah. So we thank you so much for joining and being part of the community. Continue to be the community and, like we said, do not shy. And coming from this topic, Lini, what do you think we should talk about next? We had a couple of things in mm-hmm. mind. Uh, we will probably throw clues here and, and there. there. So you can <laughs> probably media. guess what it is. Yeah, and then depending on you guys' response, we are going to pick um, a specific topic to deal with. But I think... We had some to mention. We were talking about glow up, like the glow up trend Mm -hmm. going around. We had mental awareness Mm -hmm. as well. And then we talked about violation of gratitude, Um, you know, that one. And navigating sexuality in African communities. In case, Mm because the other ones are straightforward. In case you're wondering what violation of gratitude is, that's just when it happens in society, especially the Africans who understand it. It's like someone lending a hand, and lending that hand isn't, f- it, isn't I mean, free. Yes, <laughs> isn't free. At the bottom of your heart, because it could be, but it's not free. It's almost like you are lending a hand, but you are pulling from. Yes. So that's pretty much that's what that metaphor. means. But on that note, thank you for having me, listening to me. I know sometimes I talk fast a lot. <laughs> I'm trying to be better, but I just have so much to say. My tongue doesn't keep up with my brain. And I have, I talk a lot anyways. You guys already know that. I've been talking through season one, right? But at this juncture, we are going to close. Thank you for lending us your ears. Thank you for supporting our change for Lini, our frequency of the podcast. And like we said, continue to be involved. Do not shy off. We do not end the conversation here. We continue even on social media platforms. So until next time, remain blessed. Bye. Thanks for listening and make sure to join us for our next episode. Follow African Teapot on both Instagram and Facebook for daily inspiration and motivation. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, African Teapot Podcast.